Coming up on today's edition of Locked On Eagles, it's the first mock draft Monday of the 2023 offseason. We'll go through a seven round Eagles mock draft coming up next. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making Locked On Eagles your first listen each and every day. Welcome into a Monday edition of the show. I'm Louis DiBiase alongside Gino Camilleri. We're your only daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast Monday through Friday. Yes, even throughout the offseason, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can find us in video form as well on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because Gino on Mondays, we do our seven round Eagles mock drafts on Mock Draft Monday. We've been doing this since we started the show back in 2018. We're going to have less episodes this year because the Eagles made the Super Bowl. So mm -hmm. last year, I think we did a mock draft in, what, January? And yep. now it's taken till March 6th. And next week is free agency, too. So definitely not as high volume this year, but they're equally as fun, especially when the Eagles have two first-round picks and a second. And the thing is, Lou, we don't even know what their needs are going to be because their right. defense... That could change yeah, in the blink of an eye. It's going to be completely different than the one probably in two weeks. Without a doubt, because we always know free agency comes before the draft. Right. Like it or not, it's how the NFL schedule is set up. I think it should be vice versa. I agree. I'm with you. It's because all of a sudden you're sitting there and the best player available in the draft is somebody at a position that you already signed in free agency. But yeah. the Eagles, like a smart team, don't ever kind of fade away from taking the best player available, even if they go in free agency and sign multiple players. But Lou, this draft isn't about quantity. It's about quality. You have four premium picks in the top 100, two in the first round, potentially more. Lou, I was thinking about it the other day. If you want to move one of those first round picks, I don't know why we haven't been in, in the consideration for checking out those teams that are in the top of the second round and saying, which one of those teams might hop up and do what Baltimore yeah. did a couple of years ago when the Eagles drafted Dallas Goddard? Because that seems to be an approach that I, I would take rather than moving 10. Because at 10, with the way that the quarterbacks performed at the Combine, many teams need them. I mean, look at the NFC right now. You can make the argument that Derek Carr signing with the Saints today is the second or third best quarterback in I'm the with conference. You. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of shuffling, and a lot of those teams in the top 10 are going to want quarterbacks, so that should only play into the hands of the Philadelphia sure. Eagles. Yep, the Eagles right now have the 10th overall pick in the first round and the 30th overall mm -hmm. pick. So we've mentioned the idea of moving down from 10 if there's a quarterback needy team that wants to move up. But you can move down from 30, you can move up from 30, and move down from 10, you can move up from 10. There are a million different options that Howie Roseman can do to prioritize quality or quantity because they do need more draft picks. I'm sure the compensatory pick formula will, um, you know, shake out. And I'm not sure, Gino, they can still receive comp picks this year, right? Or is that no, for no, no comp picks are always the that's year right. after. So yes, next year, right. folks, those are going to be some fun. Mock draft right. Mondays yeah, when they exactly. Got 12, 13 picks. But this year, just like I keep going back to 2018, you really have to nail this. And mm -hmm. it just happens to be Lou that the depth and the strengths of this class line up as perfectly as in symmetry as one could imagine to replace guys that are inevitably going to be leaving and guys you are inevitably going to have to replace with cheaper money deals because the Jalen contract, the impending 50 million plus dollar deal is on the horizon. I agree. All right, Gino, let's kick off the let's do it. mock draft of the 2023 offseason. We're going to do a seven-round Eagles mock draft. They don't have a ton of picks, but they have two picks in the first round, a second, a third, and a couple day three selections in the seventh round as well. So I'm going to use the 10th overall pick. Gino will have the 10th next week. We're going to go alternate as we always do throughout the offseason when we do this show. So here we go. The Chicago Bears are the first pick. Let's start off this draft. And, you know, I think we're going to hold off on trades for another episode. Let's just sit with the picks that we have right now. And so with the 10th overall pick, you look at the board. And as you mentioned, all of the quarterbacks, I think, went, right? C.J. Stroud off the board, Bryce Young, Anthony Richardson, and Will, Will Levis. Levis. Yep. So that pushes down a ton of prospects. Um, who are you – looking at on this board. And I think I can already predict one. So we might actually make this pick together. Um, if I'm thinking where your head is, this just happens to be the perfect situation 
where there's three guys that it's like, okay, I'll take any of these three. And it almost yeah. is like the JC Horn, Pat Sertan situation that if the Eagles were able to draft one of those two, I firmly believe that they do. Yeah. But man, Christian Gonzalez just makes too much sense. Lou, I've been preaching the good word of Sego since he was at Colorado and he was playing for one of the worst teams in the FBS. It was so evident. He was the best player in that school goes yep. to Oregon puts up career numbers, and then at the combine, Lou, did you see how he ran his 40? It didn't oh, look yeah. like he was struggling. It didn't look like he got out of bail. He's just a very fluid runner. He, he'll shock you with his long speed. What was it, a 4-3-4 four, four total, I think? 4-3-4. Four, four. Luke Braun yeah. from Lockdown Vikings made a great point. When you watch Christian Gonzalez's film, it doesn't yeah. look like he runs a 4-3-4, four, four, but he made a great point. It's because he's smart. He knows how far out of phase he can kind of bait a wide receiver to get because he has that length to make it up. And if you love length, it's either Joey Porter or Christian Gonzalez. Devin Witherspoon went the pick before this. Of course, yeah, he's my CB one. So, you know, I would have took him 100%. over Gonzalez and Porter. But, yeah, I think Porter and Gonzalez are both very worthy of this selection. And then you look at there's some other spots they could go. I mean, Peter Skaronsky, look, Lane Johnson is still in his prime mm -hmm. and not going anywhere, but they need tackle depth and they need a, a long term replacement at that position. You know, I think the Eagles are really going to like Kalaja Kansi from Pittsburgh, the defensive tackle. And he had a great combine this past weekend, especially if they lose Javon Hargrave, mm -hmm. who's apparently going to command 20 million per year, if you. not more next week. They're going to need help to get depth behind Jordan Davis and Milton Williams. So there's a lot of guys. Lucas Van Ness, the Eagles could need a I kind of like Van Ness. Brandon He's, yeah. Lou, he is that Charles Amenehue, like yeah. too, too big to be a pure edge rusher, too small to be a defensive and tackle. And the Eagles draft linemen, you know, in the too. first round. It's they what do. they do. But I think this is the year, considering James Bradbury is going to leave in free agency. He's just going to. Mm -hmm. Darius Slay is on the opposite end of 30 now. He's got one year left in that contract. They need both short-term help on the boundary at corner and long-term, and this class is stacked. I mm -hmm. like Christian Gonzalez more than Joey Porter Jr. I think you do as well. Agreed. And what a reaction this would be on our live draft show if Gino got an Oregon duck with the Eagles' 10th overall pick. We've had the JGR Thigga Whiteside reaction. We've had the Devontae Smith pick. We've had the trade for A.J. Brown. Gonzalez would make for another awesome moment, you know, so I would root for this pick and I think he's definitely worthy of 10th overall needs lining up with the strengths of the draft. It yep, just happens exactly. to be that. And I think Lou, that corner is one of those positions that teams have just continued to add stock to. I mean, look at yep. Devin Singletary last year or not Devin Singletary, excuse me, Houston. Uh, Derek Stingley. Oh, Stingley. Yeah, Stingley. Yeah, Don't worry. Goes, I did this. I think I did the same thing on the last show. I yeah. Stingley, Stingley. <laughs> Sauce. I mean, teams love outside guys who yeah. are great athletes who have length. And if you want to replace Darius Slay and James Bradbury, find somebody who's a perfect middle of both of them. Length, yeah. as le athleticism, ability to play man, ability to play off. I think it's a great culmination of what could be. Your next CB1 in a couple of years from now. And it's only more competition for Zach McPherson. It gives you another option moving forward. Get younger, get quicker. Christian Gonzalez fits all of that. I agree. All right, let's see what happened after that 10th pick. So um, definitely had a lot of receivers go. Jordan Addison, uh, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. Um, we had a lot of offensive linemen go. Bajan Robinson, the running back from Texas, goes to Tampa Bay. Had a tight end in there as well. Michael Mayer to Notre Dame. A great tight end class to Gino. Another mm -hmm. receiver as well, Quentin Johnson from TCU. Uh, mostly linemen and receivers, actually two tight ends. It's a good tight end class. So the Eagles here, we're on the clock at the 30th pick. We already got a cornerback, so not going to take Deontay Banks, although I like Banks a lot. Got some tackles, got some defensive linemen on the board. Gino, are you thinking trenches here? Day one, right? The Eagles got to go back to it, I'd imagine. With one I'm definitely picks. thinking trenches. I, yeah. I know Clancy, or Clancy would have been the pick, maybe Nolan Smith, but they go 28 to the Bengals, 29 to the Saints, yeah. respectively. I am intrigued by the idea of Will McDonald because, to me, he's not just a, a pure speed rusher. He can really anchor and hold that edge, and the Eagles are going to need a replacement for Brandon Graham. It's a yeah. completely different type of edge rusher than Josh Sweat, than a guy like Hassan Riddick, and he's a guy you can move inside, a guy who can anchor on the edge there. I think that's going to be their pick unless they move down, but we're sticking here. I think Will McDonald, the fourth edge out of Iowa state, he put up big numbers at the combine too. 
you're right at the end of that round there. You get that fifth year option on an edge rusher. I think it's a smart play. You already got your cornerback. You could double dip on day two if you want to yep. at safety potentially. I think that's a great position to pick another tight end if need be. But hey, man, that's the good thing about 30. If there's a premier tight end, let's say Dalton Kincaid falls to 30. I wouldn't be shocked if the Eagles pick him. Jameer Gibbs also could be another selection at 30. They're not going to yep. take one at 10 in terms of a running back but they haven't shied away from potentially taking one at the back half of the first, i.e. Sony yeah. Michelle when they went and took Dallas Goddard a couple of years. Yeah, I'm a fan of the idea of going corner and then alignment with that other pick, regardless if you do it at 10 or at 30, just because you look at the edge and the defensive tackle positions. I don't know now if Javon Hargrave or Fletcher Cox are going to be back. I don't know. I mean, Brandon Graham, I hope he's back on a team-friendly deal. Even if he is, Gino, the Eagles like to be four-plus deep on the edge and at tackle, so... Graham also is only going to be here for another year or two if he mm -hmm. resigns. So they need long-term depth. Yeah, behind Sweat and Riddick. Yeah, I don't know. The Browns might offer BG a ton of money. So mm -hmm. I think the edge makes a lot of sense there. I think tackle on both sides, guard as well. I think you can almost guarantee, that's just in the Eagles' DNA, but this year they definitely need the long-term help. I think you can guarantee one of those two first-round picks, if they stay with both selections, is going to be in the trenches. So I like the Will McDonald pick, the edge rusher from Iowa State. We took Christian Gonzalez with the 10th overall pick, the Oregon cornerback. We've got our second round pick, our third, and our final two sevenths coming up next in segment two of this Mock Draft Monday on Locked on Eagles. And guys, today's show is sponsored by Built Bar. Looking for a delicious treat, but don't want all the fat and calories? Then you got to try a Built Bar. If you're like me, you don't like to sacrifice taste for health. You want to have both, right? You want to have that balance. Trying to get that summer bod back, you got to try a Built Bar. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in some unbelievable flavors. You got churro. I love the peanut butter brownie. Coconut almond is great as well. Not sure how Built does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. These bars only have 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. Now, you don't need to wait around to get a box. For years, we've been telling you to get your Built Bars at Built.com. Now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. Head over to your Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section, and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. And if you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter, and churro. You'll thank me later, and we thank Bill Barr for sponsoring the Locked On Eagles podcast today. All right, Eagles fans, this is a Mock Draft Monday edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. So, Gina, we're going through a live seven-round Eagles mock. And to recap what we did with our first two picks, with the 10th overall selection, I took Oregon cornerback Christian Gonzalez. And with the 30th overall pick, you selected Will McDonald, the edge rusher from Iowa State. Two big needs the Eagles have. Edge is more long-term and depth-wise, but cornerback, it's immediate now, and for the future, they need to finally take a corner, and they do it with your favorite college, the Oregon Ducks' Christian mm -hmm. Gonzalez. So let's roll through here. The Eagles have another early pick, the 62nd overall selection in the second round. So we've gone corner and edge. Gino, I think some of the positions that I'm looking at a lot now, defensive tackle, offensive lineman, maybe a guard or a tackle, those are the big ones that I'm looking at here. No, I totally agree. A swing tackle in this position, somebody that you could develop yeah. is going to be key. And what better individual than to judge offensive linemen than the guy was, who was running the drills at the combine, right, Jeff exactly. Stoutland. There's a reason that they put him out there. He's the best at evaluating that position. I think that's a for sure pick that you could yeah. kind of nail in in that top 100, whether it comes in pick one, two, or three in either of those rounds respectively. I believe that they're going to go and pick an offensive lineman at some yeah. point. Yeah, Gino, I really like Matthew Bergeron from Syracuse. Mm. I thought he had a great week at the Senior Bowl. I thought he also had a really good final year with Syracuse. Syracuse got some good draft prospects this year. You can also see Garrett Williams, the cornerback, probably a day two pick. They also have Sean Tucker, the running back. So a school that we both lived close to has some guys this year. And I think you look at the tackle position, is it as immediate as right guard? No, Lane Johnson's here still, and he is – on a historic run the last few years, Isaac Samalu is going to cash in with another team likely in free agency. But you look at tackle long-term, Lane Johnson's mentioned a few times to the media that he doesn't know how long he's going to play. And you look at Andre Dillard's going to leave in free agency likely as well to be a starter with another team. Gino, they need tackle depth. They need backups. 
and they need long-term help. So I really like Bergeron here, and I'm going to go with the Syracuse Orange kid. I think Bergeron is somebody who benefited from that senior bowl going up against that class of competition. You look at his tape, he was clear in a way the best offensive lineman there at Syracuse, yeah. who had a great first six games of the season. It kind of fell off towards the back end, but you could see Sean Tucker's production. That's the running back there. It went through that offensive line, man. They were good in the run game. Jeff Stoutland is always somebody that if you're good against the run, we can build the pass setting repertoire. And I think that's something you could get yeah. out of Bergeron moving forward. And hey, funny yeah. enough, Sean Tucker goes the pick before pick. Yeah, nine. there we go. All right, Gino. So we've gone trenches back to back. We took an edge rusher and a tackle. Some other needs I'm thinking, maybe a receiver at this point, tight end you've mentioned, running back if they let Miles Sanders go, could still pick a guard, a defensive tackle. There's still a lot of ways you could you could go with this 94th pick. It's shocking that the Eagles who invest so much at tight end have not invested in an Iowa tight end in quite some time. And folks, if you've seen film of Sam Laporta, this guy is like trying to take down a rhinoceros in the open field. And you talk about wanting to open up your playbook to have that 12 personnel to where you can rely on a second tight end, which will open up a ton of looks for everybody else. They were kind of hamstrung to wherever Dallas Goddard's going. You could put your pass protection to that side because right. Stoll and Calcaterra aren't going to be a threat. We'll see how much they love Stoll and Calcaterra based off what they do in this offseason. But Sam Laporta, folks, this dude is chiseled, chiseled, built like stone, can block in against the run, and is an unbelievable yards after the con yards after contact, not yards after the catch. This dude just gets hit and keeps going. You talk about having two pure threats at tight end. I think Sam Laporta in any other draft where you don't have those elite guys like the Mayors, the Kincaids of the world, is going to be probably a second-round pick. Guys like that are going to fall. Give me Sam Laporta. Give me an Iowa tight end. These guys just continue to churn out tight end. It is truly tight end university there at Iowa. No, it really is. I mean, Hawkinson, Noah Font, you look at George Kittle and now Laporta. I, I agree, Gino. And I think the Eagles under Nick Sirianni are always going to be predominantly an 11 personnel offense. The days of Doug Peterson going heavy with 12 personnel with Ertz and Goddard are past them. But you're right. They do not have a legitimate threat at tight end outside of Dallas Goddard when he was injured this year. And you look at wide receiver three, wasn't great with Quez Watkins either. Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown had to carry the load in the passing game. So having a 12 personnel package that you know there's a second tight end out there you have to attend for in the passing game, that's going to only make them more complete, more multidimensional. Mm -hmm. And I think Jeff Stoutland, what he can do in the run game with 12 will be very exciting to see. So even though they're going to be 11 personnel centric, they definitely need a second tight end that can catch the football for injuries purposes and for the fact that you're going to run 12 you have to and I look at what yeah. the Chiefs did in the Super Bowl against you Lou I mean you have Travis but the other two tight ends they had both played an integral part there was a reason that 13 personnel by the Chiefs was the best unit and the best personnel grouping that they put out there all season it makes teams have to compensate for the big man in the run which then yeah. opens up a threat of a tight end going against a linebacker who might not be better suited for coverage, but then you take advantage of that chess game and the Eagles need that because when it's only one guy, you know where your attention is going to be focused to. And as good as Dallas Goddard is, he isn't that unicorn that Travis Kelsey is, right? Like you could still hold right, him in check right. if you double him, but if you get another threat, Lou, that only pumps up everybody else. In my opinion, you add in a receiving running back that you could potentially add to. That's really what you need. You, you have to continue to add to your pitching arsenal. In my opinion, I agree. I agree. So Gino, we took a tight end there with that other pick in the uh, third round that right. That was mm -hmm. 94. Yep. So we're back on the clock here. The Eagles don't have a lot of draft picks from rounds four through six. They actually don't have any right now. I imagine that will likely change. They're going to move down at some point and try to recruit some assets. Or, you know, we've seen the idea of trading Quez Watkins around there and trying some different ways to accumulate more picks this year. But as you mentioned, no matter what, it's mostly going to be quality over quantity in this class. So we took a tight end. You could go guard here with one of these later picks. You could go running back maybe even a linebacker, depending on the future of TJ Edwards and Kazir White. But, you know, I kind of like the idea of continuing to stockpile weapons. And Quez Watkins is not getting the job done right now as the third receiver. But at the same time, me and you have mentioned in the past, we like that niche role of that fourth passing target to be a, a blazer, right? Because mm -hmm. they're not going to get a lot of touches. So when they do touch the football, hopefully it can be 
down the field and they can make their impact known with less touches. I know right now he's ranked 241 from PFF. I like him a little more than they do. Darius Davis, the TCU wide receiver, ran a 4-3-7, by the way, at the Combine this past weekend. I like getting Quez Walk in some competition, so I'm going to go with the Horn Frog. Yeah, it really makes you think that if these TCU guys get a true quarterback, what their ceiling could be. I mean, yeah. Quentin Johnson, you saw it when he's catching balls from Anthony Richardson and C.J. Stroud. You're like, okay, there clearly is a difference here from Max Duggan. It's like, oh, right. Jalen Hurts, you talk about the arm strength. Lou, like how does Jalen just continue to get his arm strength better every single year? I, I don't, know, I don't understand it, but you have yeah. to take advantage of it. Because let's say you have that Quez Watkins catch in the Super Bowl. I mean, that you might win the thing. Jalen was the best deep ball passer in 2020. In the sport, in the sport, Lou. Yeah. In the entire sport, man. Like he he is truly a threat that could push the ball downfield. And that's the final evolution, in my opinion, because when you bring in another tight end, it gets eyes down low. You have to have those deep shots. Plus, I mean, if you run four verts, everybody's playing man. Who's gonna who's gonna stop that fifth guy that can run a four right. three seven? That's ideally yeah. what you want to get to. And this late, I think that's exactly what you want to go for. You want to go for those guys that have that one trait that you could truly develop on. And that's why yeah, in the seventh at, round, it's like Quez Watkins. Yeah. I mean, Gino for for Quez and what he is right now, he still was a great pick for what a late sixth round selection. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, we yeah. were saying one of those wide receivers had to work out of that class. And yeah. between him, John Hightower, and Jalen Rager, he was the best of the bunch. It just yeah, exactly. happens that when you see better players, you now see where the margin to yeah, make up comparatively. that difference is. Comparatively, right. right. You're not comparing apples to apples anymore. It's apples to oranges, and you clearly see mm. you got some good oranges on those outside, and your apples might be a yeah. little bit expired. So that's where I'm going with that pick. I, I agree with you. Yeah, Whether it's... Uh, Let's say it's a blazer, somebody that could be more of a gadget type of player. I think the pick with Davis is pretty much spot on to what the Eagles could do there. All right, you know, you got our last pick here. It's 250 in round seven. What are you thinking? We've gone so far, just to recap, corner, mm -hmm. edge, offensive tackle, tight end, and receiver. So a pretty good balance. Let's check out the quarterback list. Because right, I don't think they go here. another year without drafting a quarterback. They tend to do that. Give me Dorian Thompson Robinson. Yeah, it makes so I much sense. I saw him live playing against Colorado. I've seen him five years in the Pac-12. Very similar development arc to Jalen Hurts, in my opinion. I do think Dorian Thompson Robinson is a more accurate passer than Jalen was coming out of college. But if you're looking at a prototype to keep that quarterback room similarly the same, if Jalen Hurts were to go down, like when they put Gardner Minshew in, Minshew in there last year, you had to kind of reconfigure that whole offense in a way. You put DTR in there, I think you're going to get a lot of the same looks. He'll benefit scout defenses and scout offenses because you'll probably get a better look when you're going against a guy like Justin Fields. You put yeah. DTR in there for scout, more of those athletic type of guys. That's DTR's job. And he is a guy that you talk about drafting quarterbacks that fit the same mold as your quarterback. Exactly. I, it's between Malik Cunningham and him for me. I think DTR has a higher ceiling. He's I a think passer, he, right? He I definitely mean, is a passer. Yeah. He can inevitably be a backup for you. I still think they bring in a veteran option, but DTR isn't a third guy to, to have off the bench because they had Ian Book this year, Lou. He's definitely an upgrade from I agree. Ian Book. They need to find somebody there that worst case scenario. I agree. I like the idea. Put you in a position to win. Yeah, I like the idea of bringing in quarterbacks that if Jalen Hurts gets hurt, you have a mobile quarterback, you don't have to throw everything out the window. And I mm. think Gardner Minshew, as much as he was a pretty solid backup for two years, having to completely change your offense with Minshew, I mean, nobody's going to be Jalen Hurts and replace him, but having a mobile quarterback can, especially when you have an offense that does the things the Eagles do, you don't want to have to throw all of that out because it's what makes them great. So Thanks. I really do like that pick as well. I was thinking quarterback with that last pick. So we're definitely on the same page. We'll recap our seven round mock draft coming up next to round out our first edition of Mock Draft Monday. All right, Eagles fans, we're wrapping up Mock Draft Monday right here on the Locked On Eagles podcast. Gino, Gino and I went through our first seven-round mock. Gino, let's take a look at what we did with the first pick, 10th overall. We went with Oregon cornerback Christian Gonzalez. Then at 30, Iowa State edge rusher Will McDonald. Then Syracuse tackle Matthew Bergeron in round two at 62 overall. Then we went tight end from Iowa, uh, tight end university at the 94th pick in the third round, Sam Laporta. We kept 
building weapons around Jalen Hurts. The seventh round, 221, we took Darius Davis, the burner from TCU. And then we get some more quarterbacks in the room. Seventh round, 250 overall, UCLA quarterback, Dorian Thompson-Robinson, Chip Kelly's guy, we bring in to the Philadelphia Eagles. Gino, your overall thoughts on our first mock. I think we did pretty good. I, I agree. I think you fill a need at cornerback. Will McDonald, the edge rusher. This is from Lance Zerline over at NFL.com. Just some of the strengths of him. Explosive yeah. athlete with long arms. Uses well-timed hands and length to stick and separate from blockers. Pursues targets with impressive change of direction and quickness. Fires out and races to the top of the rush arc. Ankle flexion and hip strength to rip, bend, and drive through redirection. I mean, this guy just screams somebody that you can mold and continue to be a technical pass rusher. And I only think he's going to get better against the run. I think out of that group that you could have selected between Ojalari, between the kid out of Georgia too, that yeah. Will McDonald is the best run defender. It might not be the best group of edge setting run defenders, but he is the best of that bunch. You have a need for that past Josh Sweat. You have a need for that past Hassan Reddick. Though you don't get the interior guy, I think you get a strong guy at the edge. And same yeah. thing with tackle. I mean, you're shoring up your blind side or your arguably the most important depth position in the NFL. It's so is edge tackle. And, you know, when you look at last year, when Lane Johnson went out and pretty much every year that he's been out, this team just looks completely different. And Matthew Bergeron isn't going to step in and be Lane Johnson if he does go down. But you don't want to have to, I think, consistently go to Jack Driscoll and have him have to cover right. every spot as a backup. So, yeah, you, you don't want to take long-term backups with a second-round pick. But, again, Lane Johnson, who knows what the future holds? You know, he's talked about maybe only playing a few more years. I hope that's not the case. But the Eagles like to be proactive not reactive, especially when it comes to the trenches. So I think that pick makes sense. And then you got to continue to build weapons around Jalen Hurts. We went tight end and wide receiver. And I think you're going to need that depth, right? Quez Watkins, mm -hmm. only one year left. You could trade him to try to get more picks in this draft. Tight end, you need a viable guy opposite or behind, I should say, Dallas Goddard. So you can play more 12 personnel. So um, I, I think those picks make a lot of sense too for depth. Depth replacing guys that yeah. are potentially leaving and finding guys that you could develop long-term are going to be key in this class. Well, Dallas Scott was 28, Gino, when yeah. they, or excuse me, he is 28 now. Zach Ertz was 28 when mm -hmm. they drafted Goddard. So uh, makes sense timeline wise too. Reactive or proactive, not reactive. That's the Philadelphia Eagles. And I expect free agency to be where they're more re reactive, where they have to sign one of their two linebackers have to sign one of their two safeties. Maybe have to sign one of their interior defensive linemen. And then in the draft, you be proactive, which we've seen them do the last couple seasons or so, because in those drafts where they are reactive, you end up with the Danny Watkins. You end up with the Marcus Smiths of the world. The Eagles have to avoid that. And Howie Roseman, out of all general managers, has really cemented that as one of his key building blocks when it comes to foundational team building. We're going to build through the trenches. We're going to continue to add weapons to our offense, and we're going to continue to add depth. Because look at Lou, if you don't have depth, you don't have offensive line play, and you don't give weapons for your quarterback, I don't care how good the defense is. We saw yeah. the result in the Super Bowl. You have to continue to add, even if you were think you are that good, continue to add on offense. And that's what I think the focus of this draft could be. And those are the positions they value, right? It's mm -hmm. the passing game. So anything that involves that quarterback, linemen, pass catchers, and then it's defensive linemen on the other yeah. side. Talk and about corner... taking away the pass too. That's yeah. cornerback. And, and, and cornerback, right. With Christian Gonzalez. And this, this CB class is so good. Maybe you go cornerback 30, maybe a quarterback like Will Levis falls and the Tennessee Titans want to move up and you get down from 10 and you take mm. an edge rusher or a defensive tackle, you take Cansey from Pittsburgh and then you take corner after. But no matter what, you know, I really think, and I said on the show Friday, they need to come away with a corner on day one. This is the mm. year that you can finally take a year off from going lineman, 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 lineman. You can still have your lineman, but I want to come away with one of these boundary guys because the future with Bradbury, I think is already over. And mm -hmm. with Slay, I know he's still going to be here probably for another year or two, but I mean, you got to have more options. I don't want to go back to the days of, you know, Jalen Mills and Ronald Darby, Bradley Fletcher. I got used to what I saw last year. And even at the depth position, I mean, you're going to the Chandon Sullivan days, the Devontae Bowsby. Right, even right. if you walk out of there and Zach McPherson's like your third or fourth cornerback on the outside, I'm feeling a lot better than I was yeah. in those eras. And it starts by being proactive. Add athletes, add guys that love the sport, and add guys that are healthy. That's Howie Roseman's yep. three tricks and three 
things that he looks for in draft picks. So continue to pick up those nuggets here as we go on. I will say this, pay attention to what pro days this team attends because that will give you a better insight to where yep. they are looking. Tie what prospects are at the pro day to what the team needs are, and it's a good way to figure out where they might be going with their picks. We got mock drafts for you, seven rounds every single Monday right here in the Locked On Eagles podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the show on all podcast platforms and on YouTube as well. We're going to try to do a bunch of different stuff with mock drafts, right? We're going to try mm -hmm. to trade down, trade up. We got mock versus mock. We've got eight episodes this year, less than in the past, but that's a good thing. It's because we were covering the Eagles trying to win a championship. So we'll get back to it next Monday. But we've got shows for you Tuesday through Friday as we move forward to free agency and take a look at a lot of moves that Howie Roseman has to decide if he's going to make or not. So make sure, again, to subscribe to Locked on Eagles. And as always, thank you for making Locked on Eagles your first listen every day. Make sure your second listen is the Locked on NFL Draft Podcast. Damian Parson and Keith Sanchez provide in-depth coverage of the biggest prospects with deep dives into sleepers and hidden gems that could change your favorite NFL team. You can find Locked on NFL Draft wherever you get Locked on Eagles. For Gino Camilleri, I'm Lou DiBiase signing off. Thank you for downloading. Thank you for watching and listening. And as always, let's go birds. Fly, Eagles, fly.